What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about two words that you can add to your scalar functions to make them run dramatically faster. And what are those two words? Whip schema binding. And at this point you might be thinking, Bert, schema binding optimizations were added all the way back in SQL Server 2005. Why are you making a video about this today? And you're right, it is an old feature, but here's a dirty little secret. No one uses schema binding. Okay, I guess it's unfair to say that no one uses it. I'm sure there are people aware who are aware of it and do use it on a regular basis, but it seems like the every time I go on to a website and find someone asking a question that involves a function or posting an answer that involves a function, no one ever uses with schema binding. And maybe I should be giving those people the benefit of the doubt Maybe they're copying and pasting this code from the internet straight onto the production servers, but before they execute it, they add with schema binding. Maybe. So let's talk about what schema binding does. When you create a view or a function with the with schema binding option, SQL Server knows that the underlying data sources in that view or function can't be changed since they are schema bound objects, like our views and functions that depend on the structure of those tables or columns. So schema binding is pretty cool from that aspect because it will prevent a change uh, from happening that would cause a viewer function to break unknowingly. And that's a pretty cool feature of schema binding. But what's even cooler is what the SQL Server Optimizer can do when you add with schema binding to a non-data accessing scalar function. Okay, hold up a second. Rewind that to a non-data accessing scalar function. All right, cool. So this optimization is only going to apply to scalar functions that don't need to query a table, right? These are functions that clean up white spaces or convert a date into a specific format. Basically anything that relies on other SQL Server functions or just basic logic that doesn't need data from the database. And so the way this optimization works is that by default, SQL Server assumes your function is always gonna access data. Because it assumes it's gonna access data, it needs to perform some checks to see what objects need to be accessed and if they exist or not. And for scalar functions that we know don't access any data objects, that step is really just a waste of time, right? It's unnecessary. So by adding with schema binding to our function definition, SQL Server is able to do that check one time in advance and know that there's no data being accessed in our function so it can skip performing that check at runtime. You can see an example of this optimization in action in these two non-data accessing scalar functions. Our first function, which is not schema bound, takes over 1500 milliseconds to complete. Our second function, which does have the with schema binding option, takes only around 60 milliseconds to execute. That's way faster than our function that didn't include the with schema binding option. And the performance you get from the schema binding optimization doesn't only occur in these select and insert statements. It also can occur on update and deletes when SQL Server needs to use Halloween protection. And Halloween protection is just a way to prevent SQL Server from updating the same data multiple times within a single update statement. And the way we can see this with schema binding optimization occur is that we add a blocking spool operator. That's how Halloween protection is, is implemented um, in our function that does not include schema binding, but in our function that is schema bound and doesn't access any data, we could see that our execution execution plan doesn't include that spool. SQL Server knows it doesn't have to add Halloween protection because there's no data being updated. It's a non-data accessing scalar function. And since spools can often have a high cost in our execution plans, this adds another significant performance benefit. In conclusion, if you have non-data accessing scalar functions, add the with schema binding option to get a significant performance boost. You might also consider adding with schema binding to other functions and views just for the underlying object change prevention right mechanism that with schema binding offers. So after today, I hope some of your slow running scalar functions run just a little bit faster because you've added the with schema binding option to them. And if you already had the with schema binding option, well, give yourself a pat on the back because you're awesome. And as always, be sure to press that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly SQL Server video, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.